And here we go. We're going to talk about the other big thing, the one of the most important reasons people use virtual private networks nowadays. We're talking about access. <laughs> VPNs were initially designed as a security thing um, to anonymize your internet use for is one reason of course but they were also developed uh, as sort of uh, company tools used to you know keep company files safe and they're still used a lot that way you can log into company virtual private networks that host things you can only find there as opposed to at the, on the internet at large but nowadays vpns are generally used to offer access all over the world to all sorts of different countries and this is just an example map of where you might get, you know, service for a whole bunch of different things. <laughs> where you, So you could access Netflix for Africa and Netflix for Asia, various different countries in Asia. Netflix for Australia, if you really want all the, <laughs> if you really want documentaries about spiders, I guess. So on and so forth. So let's talk about server terminology because access is all about servers. The number of servers, that's how many a VPN has in its network overall. Locations, that's where servers are located, period. That's not the same as countries they have service in. There can be multiple loca uh, server locations in a single country. That is typically the case for uh, the U.S. The number of servers in each in specific countries sometimes, the number of locations in specific countries. That's right, a single location can have a whole bunch of servers. There are specialty servers for vi virtual private networks. Uh, there are things like peer-to-peer -peer uh, servers, where some VPNs will specifically allow torrenting on specific servers, but not on all. Then again, some, like ExpressVPN, will allow you to torrent on every server. Then some have dedicated streaming servers that are designated for uh, streaming from specific platforms. You know, Netflix, BBC, and so on. Then there are obfuscated servers. Now, there are certain countries that outright ban the use of VPNs, maybe because they have a giant firewall like, say, China. And they really don't like it when people use VPNs. Well, <laughs> that's what these servers are for. Then there's Onion over VPN. Oh, let's not... Okay. How do I put this? Tor is a network design, uh, based on the Onion protocol that is designed to anonymize internet traffic. It doesn't always work as well as it should. It can and usually should be used with a v in conjunction with a VPN to make sure th your traffic is secure. Uh, it has nothing to do with torrenting. I'm not going to get into any more detail than that, but that's basically an extra security precaution you can take if you want to. Okay, back to the screen here. Uh, double VPN. This is, as I mentioned before, a feature that sends your data through two different servers to double the encryption and double the an anonymity in theory. Uh, again, heavily affects speed. And then, of course, there's good old dedicated IP addresses. Now, this is not great for anonymity, because if you're always using this, a server with the same IP address, then that IP address can be traced back to you eventually. However, I should mention it's also not good <laughs> for accessing things like Netflix in another country, because your IP address is tied to whatever country it's from. It is great for using financial services. Uh, if you, b Banking websites and PayPal will sometimes block you if you log in from a bunch of wildly different IPs in different countries. So let's say you want to log into Japanese PayPal, but you're traveling all over the world. You can use a server with a dedicated IP address to make sure that you can always access Japanese PayPal and not get blocked for it. Going into some more specifics, what can you access with a VPN? There's the international streaming platforms, Netflix, BBC, Hulu, and so on. The usual good stuff. Uh, local websites when you're out and about, local TV channels, uh, your bank account. Uh, again, specific local services that require you to be local in order to use them. And then are, there are, of course, 
there's a sen- censored content websites that are center- censored in your country, whether they're torrent sites or global news or what have you. Another a couple of uses I should note are online games. Certain online games are restricted to, say, Korea or you know, South Korea and some places like that. A lot of gamers, particularly big MMO gaming channels, use VPNs, spe- specialized gaming VPNs at that, to access games from other countries, it, you know, if you're really into that. And again, company networks, which is one of the original uses of the virtual private network. Now, we need to talk about how a VPN gives you access to blocked content. We need to go into some of the specifics here. It does this by changing your IP address. Every computer that connects to the internet has a numerical, or in the case of IPv6, IP version 6, an alphanumerical address that identifies it and separates it from all the other computers. Now... It should be noted that actually most computers, their IP address might change every time they have to reconnect to the internet, but you know, that that depends. But this is how it is with no VPN. Uh, There are ranges of IP addresses assigned to different countries. So based on your IP address, uh, a website can usually determine your, if not your city, then at least where you are in, in the world based on your country. But once you connect to a VPN, well, that you know, the server is in a different place, so it's got the IP addresses assigned to you know the country it, the server is in, and that's how, you know, like this is what it looks like if you're looking at a French IP address, if you're looking at a French server. Now, the thing about your IP address is it tells them where you are located more or less, but you need to understand IP addresses are just numbers. That's it. They do not in and of themselves, keep records of your online activity. Mind you, your internet service provider totally does that. Uh, And it does not send out other information about you. However, third parties, uh, ad tracking companies, governments, your internet service provider itself, all kinds of companies can, can use your IP address to track your activity if they match your IP address to you. So yeah, that kind of... It hurts when it comes to anonymity and all that. And that is how, you know, with an Israeli IP address, you get Israeli Netflix if you're just going through your internet service provider. However, the VPN server, as shown before, this particular one is in the US, and that's how you get US Netflix. You know, that's the basic, simple explanation. However, changing your IP address won't always do the trick. Not on its own. Um... Netflix in particular has been taking steps to try and block people who are using VPNs from accessing their service. And they do this usually by tracking IP addresses and seeing, you know, which IP addresses are used by uh, virtual private networks and their servers. But various VPN services, you take measures to bypass VPN blocking. Note, this is not the same thing as bypassing geo-blocking, which is where uh, traffic is blocked based on what country it's coming from. We're specifically talking about getting around anti-VPN software. The most powerful ones get around it mostly by constantly updating the IP addresses of their servers. And there are certain other bypassing technologies that, quite frankly, I don't understand how they work either. It's... (laughs) It's not gonna, uh, but accessing Netflix and so on isn't the only reason to change your IP address via a VPN. And I, or, nor is uh, so. Let's look at some of the other uh, things you can do with that. There's shopping. You can get better prices on some e-commerce sites by shopping from a different country. Uh, there's work, of course. If you're researching, say, some American companies. And you need to see what their websites look like in uh, in other countries or what their pricing is in other countries. You can use a VPN to see that information more easily. Because a lot of websites, especially the, the multinational ones these days, they will only, they will insist on showing you your country's version of the website. And they won't let you easily visit other, ver- you know, countries' versions. And I don't know why. It's really frustrating. <sighs> let it go. Let it go. Sorry, NVIDIA made me really mad that one time. (laughs) 
Okay. And then, of course, there's good old anonymity and privacy. You can change your IP address to hide your location from people who want to find you, and you can use it to avoid tracking, as in, you know, advertisers and so on. Make sure they're not, they don't have, like, just a ton of data on you. So, that is it for Access. I hope that gives you a general idea of all the various things people want to do with VPNs, what they want to access with VPNs. Next, we'll be getting into security and logistics and all that other good stuff. So, you know, again, stay tuned. <laughs>